Symbol Layer is a programmer's best friend. It provides convenient access to punctuation marks and other symbols that arise frequently in computer programming and software development, such as when typing code or system commands, or even when navigating and editing code in modal text editors such as Vim. In this video, I'll cover my symbol layer, which is the result of hundreds of different layout variations that I've designed, tested, and refined over the course of a decade guided by insight gained from real-world use and, more recently, with improvements based on feedback from the Glove80 community. Activation To activate the symbol layer momentarily, press and hold the nearest key in the lower arc of the right hand's thumb cluster. When you release this key, the symbol layer is deactivated and the keyboard goes back to your original layer. For example, when I hold down the symbol layer key and type the left hand's home row keys, I see symbols being typed on the screen. But when I release the layer key and type the same home row keys again, I now see letters from the base layer instead, which is what you would normally expect. To keep the symbol layer activated until you choose otherwise, hold the nearest lower key and tap the symbol layer key. This is called layer locking and it allows you to lock into a layer without needing to hold down the layer key. For example, when I lock the symbol layer and type the left hand's home row keys, I see symbols being typed on the screen, even though I'm not holding down the layer key with my right thumb anymore. To unlock a locked symbol layer, simply tap the same lower key once again. For example, after unlocking the symbol layer, I now see letters from the base layer being typed on the screen when I tap through the home row keys again. Now, let's talk about the symbols themselves, starting with the home row. Home row. On the middle finger, we have the underscore symbol, which is used to delimit words in snake case identifiers. Beside it, on the ring finger, we have the equal sign, which is used for variable assignments in mathematical inequalities and arrows. In Vim, it also serves as the auto indent operator, adjusting the indentation level of the current line or selection according to the surrounding code. Stepping out by a column on either side, we have the caret symbol on the pinky finger and dollar sign on the index finger. These serve as anchors in regular expressions, denoting the start of a line and the end of a line respectively. In Vim, they also serve as motion operators, with the caret symbol moving your cursor to the first printable character near the start of the current line and with dollar sign moving your cursor to the end of the current line. Notice how these operators are laid out left to right according to the direction in which they move your cursor. This makes them spatially mnemonic so they feel more natural, intuitive, and easy to remember. Finally, on the far left we have the hash symbol on the pinky finger which serves as a comment marker in many scripting languages. And on the far right, we have the star symbol on the index finger, which serves as a wildcard character in file name patterns. In Vim, these also serve as search operators, with hash searching backwards for the word that is currently under your cursor, and with star searching forwards for the word that is currently under your cursor. Notice how the left-to-right arrangement of these operators reflects the direction in which they move your cursor. As before, this makes them spatially mnemonic as well. And speaking of searching, the star symbol in the home row connects us to the Vim search cluster that is laid out vertically along the central column of the index finger. This cluster is made of three Vim operators. First, question mark searches backwards using a regular expression that you supply. Then, star searches forwards for the word that is currently under your cursor. Then, slash searches forwards using a regular expression that you supply. Notice how these operators are laid out top to bottom according to the direction in which they move your cursor. As before, this makes them spatially mnemonic as well. Upper rows. On the upper row, we have curly braces on the pinky and index fingers. In Vim, these serve as paragraph motion operators, which move the cursor between blocks of text that are separated by one or more blank lines. In the center, 
we have a quotation mark cluster composed of single quote on the ring finger, double quotes on the middle finger, and back tick, which I also type with my ring finger. If you reach up into the number row, on the number row, we also have parentheses on the ring and middle fingers. In Vim, these serve as sentence motion operators, which move the cursor between sentences, defined as runs of text that is terminated by a dot symbol. At the end of the number row, we have semicolon and comma, both on the index finger. Together with parentheses, these form a function call cluster for zero arity function calls, as standalone statements or nested in a list. In Vim, they also serve as jump repetition operators, repeating the most recent F and T jump forwards and backwards, respectively. Finally, on the outer ends of the upper row, we have the exclamation mark on the pinky finger and the question mark on the index finger. They are positioned for easy combination with parentheses on the row above for group negation and Boolean expressions, for optional group captures and regular expressions, as well as the ternary operator in C, and for calling predicate functions that return a Boolean value in some programming languages like Ruby and Elixir. Lower rows. The equal sign on the home row leads us to the arrow cluster, which is highlighted in green in the layer diagram. This cluster allows us to type fat arrows facing right for key value pairs in Perl, thin arrows facing right for walking pointers in C, thin arrows facing left for variable assignments in R, squiggly arrows for pessimistic version number constraints, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, not equal to in SQL, pipe operators in Elixir, and so on. On the lower row, we have the angle brackets on the pinky and index fingers mirroring the curly braces on the upper row. In Vim, angle brackets change the level of indentation in the same direction that their angle points to, so this arrangement makes them spatially mnemonic as well. Stepping out to the ends of the lower row, we have the tilde symbol on the pinky finger and the forward slash symbol on the index finger. Together, these form the file system path to the user's home directory in Unix systems. Going down to the bottom row, we have square brackets located centrally on the ring and middle fingers, mirroring the arrangement of parentheses way up above on the number row. In Vim, square brackets jump between things, such as syntax blocks, warning and error locations, paste boundaries, and so on. Surrounding that, we have the AND symbol on the pinky finger and the plus sign on the index finger. These are positioned so that they pair logically with their counterparts on the row above, the OR symbol on the ring finger and the minus sign on the middle finger. In addition to their vertical affinity, these pairs are also spatially mnemonic left to right. For example, the minus sign precedes the plus sign along both axes. Thumb cluster. On the upper arc of the thumb cluster, we have backslash for escaping all symbols on the other fingers. For example, we can use this to escape double quotation marks inside a double quoted string. Similarly, we can also use this to escape regular expression delimiters when matching file system paths containing directory separators in Unix. Another common scenario is to escape parentheses in an extended regular expression to disable their group capture behavior. Next, let's finish off the upper arc with a swipe leading from the dot symbol in the middle of the arc onto the star symbol at the end of the arc. We can also swipe back and forth when typing star dot star, which is useful for matching file names with extensions in a file system glob pattern. On we go to the lower arc of the thumb cluster. On the nearest key of the lower arc of the thumb cluster, we have the percent sign, which serves as the match it operator in Vim. It jumps you to the corresponding delimiter for the word under the cursor, or failing that to the nearest surrounding delimiter. On the middle key in the lower arc of the thumb cluster, we have the colon symbol, which serves as the ternary operator separator in C, and is doubled as a namespace operator in C++, and is also the command mode key in Vim. On the furthest key in the lower arc of the thumb cluster, we have the semicolon, 
which serves as a statement separator in C and many other languages. Spacegrams When typing two symbols separated by a space, you normally have to first let go of the symbol layer key after you type the first symbol, and then tap it again for space, and finally hold it once again to reactivate the symbol layer for the second symbol. This anti-pattern is called the spacegram because it involves typing a space in a sequence of other characters, which can be disrupted to our typing rhythm, requiring a delicately timed dance around the spacebar. To avoid breaking our typing rhythm in such cases, we can use the additional spacebar, as well as backspace, tab, and enter on the right hand's home row. This way, we don't need to exit the symbol layer to type spaces, new lines, or even to correct our typing mistakes. Let's take a closer look at these keys which I call spacegram operators. On the index finger, we have backspace to erase a character going to the left. This is equivalent to Control H in Unix and reminiscent of the letter H in Vim, which all mnemonically coincide with the letter H in Arno's ngram layout, located on the right hand index finger's resting position on the home row. Directly beneath this backspace key on the lower row, we have the delete key. This forms an erasure cluster with one key erasing to the left and the other erasing to the right. On the middle finger, we have tab, which is mnemonic with the letter T in the engram layout. This is useful for invoking tab completion, whether at a shell command line or while coding in an IDE. Similarly, we have shift tab directly underneath on the lower row for navigating tab completion menus or choices in the opposite direction. On the ring finger, we have spacebar, which is mnemonic with the letter S in the engram layout. As mentioned before, this lets us type spaces without having to leave the symbol layer. On the pinky finger, we have enter, which is mnemonic with the letter N in the engram layout. Similarly, this lets us press enter for new lines without having to leave the symbol layer. Base layer symbols. In the symbol layer diagram, you may notice that there are several redundant symbols on the right half of the keyboard, colored in gray. These are base layer symbols that pass through into the symbol layer just for convenience. For instance, you may be accustomed to using these symbols on the base layer, so having them available here lets your muscle memory type them as necessary. Demonstration Now, let's put all of these concepts to work in a demonstration, typing up some code. Conclusion. This concludes the video tour of my symbol layer. But wait, there's more! There are interactive examples of typing various bigrams and other sequences on my website under the symbol layer section, where you can see the placement of the keys involved and visualize the animated sequence of how to type them. Moreover, language specifics and my design rationale are also explained here. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos in this series coming up next.